Hello everyone, it's Mr. Ops here, and today we're going to look at some logarithm graphs. Okay, and so to start off with though, we're going to look at the function f of x is equal to 2x. I've taken the liberty to graph it here, and let's go through and talk about the key features of f of x first of all. And so I know the asymptote, if I look at this graph, I can find my asymptote is going to be here. There is my asymptote and that is at y equals 0. The intercept of this is right here. There's one intercept, it's a y-intercept, and it is 0, 1. The domain, well, I can put any x in here I want, and it will be a set of real numbers. And the range, well, it's everything above your asymptote, so y has to be bigger than zero. And so let's graphically come along here and change our to find the inverse. We're looking for the inverse. The inverse and we're going to do it graphically first. Okay so I know what happens when I do it graphically is all these points change. So this is zero one will become one zero. This point one two will become 2, 1, and 2, 4 will become 4, 2, 3, 8 will become 8, 3. On this side, this is negative 1, a half, so a half, negative 1. And my graph will be something like this. And my asymptote will also be taken care of, and it's going to go that's going to go down this way now. And so when I think about my graphs here, my asymptote is no longer y equals 0, but it is x equals 0. And if you think about inverses, it switches x and y. My intercept is now here at 1, 0. And my domain is everything bigger. Oh, everything bigger than 0. So my domain is x is bigger than 0. And now my range though can be any real number. And notice how these values switched. The x and y switched and the x and y even switched here. And there's my inverse. So I see this graph that has this nice curve. It's a reflection over y equals x. Okay, and so if I'm going to find the inverse, I know the original function my original function is y is equal to 2 to the x. And if I'm going to make an inverse function, I have to switch my x and y's. And then I have to solve for y. Well, in order to figure out how to solve for y, I have to rearrange this. I have to get this out of the exponent. And so I have to lower the exponent. And the way I lower the exponent is I lower it with logarithms. So I'm going to rewrite this in terms of logarithms. Logarithms of base 2 of x is equal to y. And so the inverse function is equal to log base 2 of x. Now these three are all the same function. I use my my conversion factor to go between the exponential logarithm equation. But please note that these two here are inverses because we switched the x and y. I did not just change the logarithm form to get here. I switched my x and y and then I changed to a logarithm. And that's actually quite important. Okay? Because now what I've established as a fact is that logs and exponentials are inverses of each other. Okay, and that's a really, really important idea because every operation in mathematics has an inverse. I know if I take some number 3 and then to that 3 I add 5, then I do the inverse operation of negative 5, well, I end up with back at 3. The 5 was my first operation, subtracted 5, and I got back to 3. They undo each other. It's an aspect of that. And so these operations eliminate each other. So in 
logarithms exponentials, the same thing happens. It's not you've been working with add and subtract for a really long time, so this these symbols are very clear to you that it's adding five and subtracting five. The symbols of logarithms ex exponents are quite different, and so they feel a lot different. So let's try this with a different number. Let's try this with three a different way. I'm going to take three, and what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take three, and I'm going to put it up into the exponent. So I'm going to take an exponential of it. So I'm going to rewrite this as two. Here, I'm going to write this as two now to the power of three. So now I three is my exponent. I applied an exponential. I put it in the exponent. Now, if I wish to undo it, I have to do the the inverse function. The inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a logarithm similar to subtracting five. I'm going to apply a logarithm of base two. And so if I start with three, I do an operation, then I undo it, I end up with back with three. These two things eliminate each other like plus and minus five. So I take three, I take three, I raise it to an exponent, and then I take the logarithm that just undoes it, and I get back to three. And that's an important property because they are inverses of each other. Similarly, I can do the same thing, but I can do from a different perspective. Let me start with, if I start with, let's say I start with 5 this time. And with 5, I'm going to apply a logarithm of base 4. And I just randomly chose some number 4. Now, if I want to undo the logarithm, then I'm going to apply an exponential, so 4, and it raises this. The relationship between four and logarithms are inverses, so they cancel each other out, and I am back to five. Similarly, if I take x and I multiply by two and then divide by two, well, that ends up being back to x. I apply a logarithm, I raise it, I put it up into the exponent of four, and they undo each other because they are undoing because they are inverses. And it's really, really quite important that you see this relationship. Let me generalize here. So, if I take x, and I take x and I raise it to a power, and then I apply a logarithm of base b, that equals x. And this is the inverse property. Similarly, if I take x and I apply a logarithm of base b, and then I take this whole thing and I put it into the exponent, apply an exponential, this also will produce x, the final result, because they are inverses and they undo each other. Now that's a pretty big deal that I'm going to let you get your head around, um, and those are two properties you should be comfortable with. To summarize some other properties, let's take a look at this sheet here. Oh, come back. Okay, I'm going to pull this up to the top here. Oh. Okay, so if I also want to look at properties here, if I know that a is bigger than zero, if this is true, then that's true. That's just converting form. That's not inverse. If a, if log a has a base of a, then I've just used this is a, a power here. So I know that's going to be one, and I can use that from my inverse property I just learned. This one here, log base a of one. Well, that's just saying that the x-intercept is always 1. If b is a negative value, it is undefined. The reason why that happens is because if I look here, 
There is nothing on this side of the function. There's an asymptote here, so all the function lives to the positive values. Log at zero is undefined, well, same reason. That's where the asymptote is. And this property here is the prop is the inverse property that I just discussed. So a bunch of summary of the properties of logarithms. I'm going to stop it here and do some examples in another video.